Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This weekly channel, we are going to be talking with Joe Jackson. Yes, the famous father of the Jackson Five, and of course, you well know Michael Jackson. Now, I am going to be very clear about the parameters of this channeling and this conversation. Joe and I are going to be talking, and I have requested that it simply be a channel with Joseph Joe Jackson. All right, so if you want to watch that, listen to that, go ahead and stay tuned. All right, let's welcome in the energy of Joe Jackson. He says, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. There is a lot, Joe, going on about your family right about now. And he kind of laughs. He says, <laughs> when isn't there? When isn't there talk? When isn't there? He's using a different word like ruckus around my family. When isn't there, he says. It's always, he says, you know, these things go in cycles, you know. It's always the case. You've got to be able to kind of uh, ride the waves and, and roll with it. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's not easy to be a famous person, a famous family, especially connected with the fame of, of your son, Michael. It's such an icon of energy and of legacy. And so... In the afterlife, with all this stuff going on around the family and in the Jackson estate, how is it affecting you or impacting you in the afterlife now, Joe, knowing that you are transitioned, you are crossed over into the afterlife? And how, I'm, I'm curious, I'm sure many who will be watching this will be curious about that as well. How is that, this energy of what's going on here on earth affecting you in the afterlife? He says, oh, he says, oh, you know, he says, oh, I don't know. It's not much to say about that. It's really not much of my business anymore. Whew, huge chunk of half of my heart, like I'm seeing a white um, circle, like a moon, big full moon circle, white circle, and half of it has like black, it's a shadow side energy and half of it is just like a pearl white energy, a reflective, almost like a mirror, and then there's like the shadowy symbolism. So it's a circle, but there's two halves of a circle. That's what comes through when he says, it's not my business anymore, basically. Can you expound on that? Reflective of, of course, your human life experience, knowing that as a spirit, you have access to be able to show us, the viewers, as people to help us relate to this understanding of now how it is in the afterlife for you versus how it how it would be if you were here he says oh i can't speculate i i really can't speculate much about that now i know that there's a big privacy and there's a big um very big importance played on the value of or very very there's a big importance energy around the circle of of um, I don't know, confidentiality, privacy, um, respect, and respect it, respecting the legacy of the Jacksons, maybe is the right way to say it. He says, you really mean Michael. You mean Michael. You'd have to ask him about that. You'd have to ask my son about that and how he feels about that. So Joe, in the afterlife, you are very different than you were as a human. Is that correct? Is that how it works in the afterlife? Once you leave the physical body and you're human, you're, you were a human and now your spirit, is that different? Like, can you feel, do you feel differently? Can you reflect on what it was like to be a person versus what it's like now to be a spirit? Well, sure I can. He says, sure I can. It's much more relaxing to be here now with you than it ever would have been in person. Now, I know that many people judged me as a person, as a human being, but you've got to understand, you do the best you can. A father does the best he can for his family. You've got to feed your family. And when you recognize that there is a lot of opportunity, the powers that be can really take care of you when you get into Hollywood, when you get into the entertainment business. You've got to recognize that it's ruthless. 
and people are out for their own riches. And you're seeing that right now play out in your life as a, as a person right now, the people who are on earth having that experience, living after we are gone, myself and my, my son, are really seeing that, how that comes to play. And it's true, it's an ugly truth. It is an ugly truth, but it is part, you know, it is part of this mentality that people have about celebrity. And it's, a, it's like a craving, like a sickness that when you're on the outside of that and you don't have talent, you can't imagine what it's like to be on the inside. It's not, you see, it's not like this big, beautiful palace on the inside. It, it can be a prison, a personal prison for many. And it was like that way for my son, for Michael. It was very much like that for him. And many people coming after him with pitchforks and... You know, that's, that's the way human, humankind can be. The kind part of that seems to fall by the wayside when there's money involved or when there's an incredible amount of defenseness, defensiveness that comes into what you experience as fear and the troubled nature of humankind at this point. The earth is not in a good a good part of its own legacy right now, let's just say that. And we, as an afterlife, we recognize that there are many things going on in the human form that cause great distress to people, who those who are in the human form. Now in the afterlife, there's not that, I do not have that sort of attachment or what you would say attitude. There's no negativity, there's no anger, hatred, but it's quite easy to plug in to the relevance of what is occurring on earth and especially when it comes to family because you know they all are connected all of those circles of connection really do play a factor so do you feel like have emotions joseph like um it's okay if i call you joe right because i, I asked you that before and you said yes oh yeah yes ah. he says oh yes yes nods mm-hmm do you have emotions or feelings? Like as a spirit, uh, you said that you're kind of connected in, like you can see the relevance of what's playing out here on the human form, whether it be in politics, let's just be honest, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in politics in the United States right now, or whether it be in the environment and water issues or in other countries or globally or, or issues like starvation or children not having shoes or wars or all that kind of stuff. As a spirit, you said that you know it's it's what's you can plug into what's relevant right now so what's happening right now so i'm curious so do you have emotions or feelings about this do you, do you feel like how would you describe that he says you know it's different it's it's sort of like water it's sort of like water you can't really tell that it's there until you feel it but you can't really feel it without sticking your hand in it or having a body <laughs> to experience that. You know, it's the senses. The emotions are senses and very uh, very much part of a, a being a person, having a body. I can say that, that emotions are definitely connected to the body. So being that I don't have that situation at this current time, I will share that the energy of things is uh, a different way that we, I, have had experience of, of feeling from the afterlife. Feeling, not in terms of emotion, but feeling as in um, a sensory type of a, a situation, such as, uh, so he's showing me like light, like a light turning on, like if a light turns on here on earth, that's connected to a part of who he is related to in his afterlife energy, who he is cl most closely connected to as far as family. If a light goes on in his family energy that he's connected to, say, say the family energy is like a circle. And in that circle, there's a bunch of little lights. And he's connected to that circle, which is what the relevance is for him in this lifetime right here and now. For us, the way he's relating as his human persona of Joe Jackson, when that light goes on, he can, it's relevant, it becomes relevant to him, so he recognizes. So the light going on would be like one of his family members in distress, 
or one of his family members um, um, praying to God or to angels to ask for assistance or, or whatever they may be praying to ask for for intervention or for a sign or a message, then he is aware of that, is what, how he's showing it to me. He says, very good, very good, Bridget. That's exactly how it is. And it's all, it, it is much more complicated, but that's pretty good, that's a pretty good description of it. Okay, good, thank you. So can you talk about relationship then, family relationship and the afterlife? So since this family circle that you're connected to as the person of one of the one of the vibrations in the many vibrations within your spirit form is joe jackson and you're connected to the family that was here can you explain how the relationship part works so as in um you were the father the matriarch of this very famous very um talented and yet a family that was very much under the uh, the microscope in many ways and that your tactics as a person in controlling the family or managing the entertainment aspect of it and the human aspect of it was very much criticized you know and ridiculed can you explain the relationship now how you relate to your family now versus how you did in human form because it feels like you at the end of the the human lifetime that you had the last like 10, 12 years, it feels like you were kind of separated and not really um, emotionally invested. Like there wasn't a lot of emotional investment in you. And there was a lot of work that had to be done from your family around forgiveness and for yourself. So in the afterlife, explain relationship. Like you as a dad to this family who are people still here on earth, you as a father. Well, it's certainly not like the Holy Father, I can tell you. It's not how you learn in the Bible and what you experience at church or in religion. It's nothing like that. It's simply, you know, a title, a position that you hold and the power that you're given in a family through the relationship. There's definitely a uh, structure to that. He's showing me like hierarchy. He said there's definitely a structure to that. And it's something that you, we all, as people, everybody with the brain, with the mind, buys into that, understands that this is the way it is. This is a structure. And when there is a father in the family, the relationship is that of a father and a father figure, which is the, the head. I would imagine if there were a strong mother figure as well, that could be something that there might have to be a struggle for power. And in many cases, there probably was in the Jackson house. And I'm not going to speak on that because I want to respect those who are living who would have been involved in conflict and struggle. And that's not the point of our conversation. But the relationship part that you ask about, it is different. It evolves. It evolves over time, you know. As I am able to more closely come to an understanding of what true divinity is i come to a place of just pure acceptance you can't turn away from love and the guidance that you get from others who are not in the form of a body who are in a spirit form is it can be so beautiful and so healing and just miraculous and it's hard to describe these this in words and the experience that i had for myself and the transition and the shifting of things but Looking back on the relationship now, it's so much different. It's far different than it ever was before, far different. So how then, Joe, are you in relationship with your family now, if it's really different now? It sounds like you are different, that you went through kind of a, a healing or almost like a miraculous, like, oh my gosh, I see the light kind of energy. How, how are you relating now to your family and how are you helping them or supporting them through their human life, or are you? Maybe you're not, maybe you have other things to be doing. He says, oh no, I'm in a, to use the human expression, I'm patiently waiting. I'm patiently waiting. There are um, a lot of circumstances and things that need to be tended to and taken care of. And for me, it's simply a, a time of waiting 
to wait, to be patient and wait. And that's really all I can do right now. And on this plane, he's like showing me on this level because he's showing me himself as like just this light, kind of light moving. <laughs> on this plane, I can only come when I'm asked for, when I'm requested, when there is a memory or a thought or a need for some kind of organized action, then there is a request for me. And if there is, then I will certainly come to service, come into service, he says. It's like being called to service. Like he, it sounds like he can't intervene. You can't intervene in the, all the stuff that's going on at the human level for the Jackson family right now. You just kind of have to wait and be patient. Well, yes, that's all anyone can really do. Nothing will be resolved in, in the anger of things and the arguments of things and the heavy fisted things. My life alone should show that. That should demonstrate that's a poor way to work. That is not a good tactic or strategy for the living of things. When you want to really live, everyone just really wants to be loved and to come to a point where they can just be in that, that life that they chose for themselves. And that's not one of suffering or pain. And there's a lot of that in the Jackson households right now. In the many households, it's affecting everyone. And, and there is going to be quite a bit, quite a lot of uh, repercussions for that consequences, yes. But as far as me and what I'm supposed to be doing, I just have to wait, I have to be patient and wait. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Thank you. Is there anything you would like the viewers here at Above Life Channel, as I'm talking to Joe Jackson from the afterlife, is there anything you'd like for the viewers to know about you, about your family or your, your famous son, perhaps? No, oh, just, you know, leave it be. Just tend to your own things. Mind your own business and let it be. You gotta, you know, you know, one of the things that's missing is faith. You really gotta turn to faith and recognize that there's a higher power, there's a higher purpose, and there's a grander. Yeah, it's like a chord harmonization is what I, I see. I kind of hear like little different tones and chimes as he's talking, like there's a bigger picture going on here. And he's saying, you got to have faith in that. And you're not going to see it or understand. And nobody owes you any explanations. Nobody owes you any. There's no effort being made so that you can understand what's going on because it's not your business. You have enough to manage in your own life. I mean, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Quite frankly, yes, I think if we collectively responded, we'd say, yes, we have more to do with our own lives than to focus on things that we can't control, that we don't have control over. But what we can do is focus on the positive. We at Above Life Channel, we can focus on positive energy, positive vibrations. We can allow ourselves to stay in a positive harmony and resonance. And there's so many different ways you can do that. Make sure you're taking in positive inputs. Don't overdo the media. Don't go down the rabbit hole of YouTube videos. Don't buy into the hype. Stay with what you know is true, which is your positive vibrational energy, your positive vibes. If you want to make change in your own life, positive vibes are the only way that you can attune to what is the highest purpose for your life. Thank you very much, Joe, for being here for this channel. And for you who are here, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, the purpose has been to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, because this, this is your life, and you get to choose how you are going to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.